Thank you so much, sir. You're You've welcome. really spoken a lot and lots of information in what you've said so far. Mm -hmm. And borrowing from your phrase that you used, you talked about deficit in, of statemanship. Yes. And I think uh, this has been a problem for us in politics, religion, and even in our various tribes. Mm. So for you, what single factor do you think can be a uniting force for Nigerians? Uh, the uniting force is we should uh, restore our lost values. We should restore our lost values. Uh, this idea of uh, monetization of everything should be jettisoned. This idea of monetization of values should be jettisoned. Uh, and it's one of those reasons why I am not interested in politics. Uh, because for you to succeed in, as a politician in Nigeria today, you must be prepared to tell lies. You must be prepared to amass money to steal, let me use the raw language. You must be prepared to promise and fail. And you must be, uh, you must be prepared to be a member of club in court. So we have to go back to those lost values. A democracy that places value on materialism and office paraphernalia is certainly an albatross to our own origin. Before 1976, traditional institutions are the custodians, molders, and reservoirs of our culture customs, costumes, and our characters. But in 1976, we introduced this system. We abolished the traditional institution, the native authority system. We brought local government system. We brought democracy. And then we now said, a local government councillor, by order of protocols, is superior to the sultan, the oba, the obi, and the emir. From that time, we got it wrong. And then secondly, in the First Republic, down to the Second Republic, a such committee is going to be organized by every political party. Go and scout of people who are above board to become our representative, in other words, our candidates. Go and scout for them. A statesman should be somebody who should be above board. The reason why he is called statesman is that he is putting the state over and above his paramodial consideration. Leadership should not be seen as a rehabilitation center for vagabonds or comedians. Leadership is a reward platform for matriculation of competent people that will be incubated to be graduated as statesmen. Greater number of those with these qualities, you will see that they don't have money. They do not have money. But they believe that they are not better than anybody in terms of education, in terms of background, in terms of morality, in terms of intellect, in terms of strength, in terms of anything. But that it is this word, trust, God has given to them. Administer the humanity and the environment and the animals on my behalf as my vice gerent. So people believe in the definition of leadership as service. That is why they excel. And nowadays, you have people that believe leadership is business. You will see somebody using all the instrumentalities available to him. He can kill, 
you can meme, you can join secret societies, you can use money, you can use uh, uh, whatever, whatever. He will even tell you, do whatever humanly possible you can to let me emerge as a winner. Let the one defeated go to the court. Because they know our legal system too doesn't help matters. Because if you have the money, whether the money is stolen, whether the money is accumulated, whether the money is arm robbed, whatever is it that you can use the money to get the most sophisticated lawyers of the country so that they will come and offer you defense over whatever, using the instrumentality of the money. Not really the, the, the truth or the sincerity you stand for. Yeah. So basically speaking, uh, we have to get people with the right conscience, conscience, people that know the true meaning of politics as per my definition, people that are fearing they are here after more than seeing the lucrativeness of what they are seeing on the world, in the world. We have to change the whole concept of politics so that it will be service, not business. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. In Nigeria, we have to go back to our earlier values mm -hmm. as a message of personal yes. choice. And you talked about uh, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Now I would like to ask you a question. What, in your opinion, do you think as regards government interference in judicial processes in Nigeria? Well, I don't see much of government interference, but what I see is fundamental defects. In the arrangement of the judiciary? Yes, the government fundamental system? defects. Let me give you instances. Section 305, 308 of the Constitution talks about immunity. Some selected officials are immune from prosecution on account of whatever offense they commit. That is the beginning of injustice to the justice system. Why should somebody be immune? And for the, that reason, you will see them with arrogance, doing whatever they want with arrogance. And for that, you will see somebody, no matter how grievous his offense, at the end of it, he will be looking for another position that will give him immunity. That is one. Secondly, there is a power called nolly prosecute. The Attorney General of the Federation is the Chief Law Officer of the Federation and is the Minister of Justice. Under sections 147, 174, and 150 of the Constitution, he has the power to determine what to prosecute and when. He is the one to determine prosecution. And apart from the determination of prosecution, he has what is called nolly, nolly prosecute. The power of nolly means the Attorney General can go into any criminal matter, any court that is going into this. He would just say, my lord, I hereby enter nolly prosecute on this case. So the case closed. The case closed permanently and nobody is allowed to ask any question why. So and he can decide to write it and send. So could this be the reason why uh, when, when the nation is selecting the chief justice, the, there's, there are lots of politics going on. This be the reason. Uh, Chief Justice or Attorney General? Attorney General. Well, uh, we said that it is the prerogative of the president to appoint. The president under Section 130 of the Constitution is the chief executive officer of Nigeria. He is the one elected. He is the president, chief executive officer, commander in chief of the armed forces, and the number one citizen under Section 130 of the Constitution. So he is now given the power under Section 147, 174, and 150 to appoint lieutenants that will oversee some sensitive places for him, inclusive of the Attorney General. And he is now given the leverage to determine whosoever. And the provision for the appointment of the Attorney General is that once you are a lawyer of up to 10 years standing, you can be appointed Attorney General. So basically anybody can be qualified for that. But when you talk about affiliation, political affiliation, blood affiliation, money affiliation, so many affiliations, they come into play. It depends on who is the president and what type of affiliation he is more interested. Is he the type that is interested in intellectualism? 
he go and look for the finest intellectual. It is the type that is interested in statesmanship. He go and get an erudite statesman. You see the type that is interested in party loyalty. Who supports him in campaign? He look from within and pick a lawyer. So, so that one is uh, entirely the DC. Then another thing that is a problem too in our legal system is that when you see section 36, subsection 5 of the constitution, it says no matter how homongous is what you have commit, committed. Even if it's more than the combination of Zuma Rock, Aso Rock, the Mandara Mountains, the Jaws Plateau, the, uh, what do you call it, Mambila Plat. Even if it's more than the totality of Nigeria, you understand, you are a judge as clean because you are only accused. You are clean until properly pronounced by a competent court of law. You are a judge clean. And even if you are sanctioned, you have the avenues to go into appeals from the court down up to the Supreme Court. And even if the Supreme Court convicts you, there is what is called prerogative of mercy. The president or the governor, depending on who, can just come and decide to give you state pardon. So where you have this type of structure as your own structure of justice? So what could be the way forward? <laughs> The way forward, uh, it depends on who is the president. Okay. Yes. Uh, I don't pray to become president. So the way forward, if I am to advise, is that, number one, we should abolish nolly procedure. We shall abolish immunity. We shall abolish state pardon. We should amend section 36, subsection 5, that says, no matter what offenses, you are free. Instead of uh, uh, accusatorial, that is, system of accusing you, we should change it to the type of Western Europe, inquisitorial rather than accusatorial. That one means if you have committed offense, they will come and read it and say, oh yeah, Mr. X, these are the offenses we are accusing you that attract so, 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 so penalty. Give us your reasons as to why we should not convict you. You are the one to bring the reasons. Rather than the prosecution, who was not there at the scene of committing the offense? Who was not there at the scene of interrogating you? Who was not there at the scene of compiling the charges? Who was not there at the scene of inspection of the uh, 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 evidences and the witnesses to be given? Would be the one to come and perform magic. And apart from the magic, by our own legal system, you must prove beyond reasonable doubt. And there is no instrument to measure the reasonability of the doubt. So much so that if the judge, you have seen the judge overnight, for example, <laughs> it is his mindset. Once he said, I have doubt over the decision, what he said, there are no sufficient facts to warrant me convicted. That is all nobody will accept. The only thing is, if you are not satisfied, you appeal against the judgment ahead. That's the only thing you can do. So we have to restructure the decision. And then sections 213 to 304 of the Constitution gives avalanche of powers under section 6 of the judiciature, the power of the courts, 213 to 304. Now amend that part. Bring about some new courts. If I am the president, I will make amendments. Even if I am a president, I will make some This Number one is that there should be anti-corruption court. Because section 15, subsection 5 says that the state, the state means anybody holding responsibility in governance, must, must fight all forms of corrupt practices and abuse of power. It is there. So I will establish anti-corruption court. I will establish election offenses court. I will establish cyber crimes offenses court. Cyber crimes and miscellaneous offenses court. Then I will establish terrorism offenses court to deal with these idiots that are causing havoc on institutions. Then apart from that, another fundamental thing is that I will restructure the Supreme Court. You have over one southern court of appeal, I mean high courts. Their appeals goes to Supreme Court, from Supreme Court to 
uh, I mean, the appeals go to, from the High Court to Court of Appeal, and from Court of Appeal to Supreme Court. When you read the Supreme Court, there are only three courtrooms. The number one courtroom is normally ceremonial, when you are swearing in new judges and senior advocates of Nigeria. The number two court is where you are doing governmental cases. That is why you see case against the, the, the president or case against the federal government or against the state. That is why you see speedy trial. And then the number one, the other one is where all these cases from the high courts, court of appeal are going there. So you will see congestion. I have filed a case, it's over 20 years now, I have not even gotten a date because of the congestion of those that arrived there before my own. So decentralize the Supreme Court. There are two ways you can do it. The way you have divisions of Court of Appeal. Make the Supreme Court has judicial divisions of the Supreme Court. Or professionalize the Supreme Court. You understand? The 28 common law subjects have Supreme Court for each of them. Supreme Court of criminal matters. Any criminal matter goes there. Supreme Court of constitutional matters. Supreme Court of land matters. Supreme Court of marriage and divorce. Supreme Court of international admiralty and shipping matters. Supreme Courts of this, of this, of this, you have them. And then appoint competent judges, appoint them there, so that every case that goes there will be a judge and justice, because justice delayed is justice denied.